Welcome back, my friend. Last episode, I went pretty far, I think. You know, just learning to be bold. When I said out loud, I see your brilliance, and I do. And I thought, wow, you know, I don't want to leave you hanging. Not that I think I would, because you're brilliant, right? But to give you some practical steps to actually start trusting yourself. And I will continue to talk about this. I think until I take my last breath, I think it's just what I'm wired to do is to talk about how we learn to trust ourselves because the world's not going to do it for us. The world is not going to do it for us because most people don't trust themselves. So how could they model for you how to trust yourself? I talk about this a lot in my book, On the Verge, Wake Up, Show Up, and Shine. I talk about how to access and trust our natural state of clear mind, bright body, and open heart. Today, I just want to give it to you in a few minutes or less, right? How do we start to drop down below that level of busyness so we can start to sense ourselves in a different way? So we can start to hear ourselves, hear those quiet whispers in our ear, hear the impulse that rises up in the early morning or late at night. All of all day long, your yourself, your your intelligent self is whispering to you, but we don't hear it because we're busy doing, doing, doing. We're busy thinking, thinking, thinking. So. The first steps in beginning to trust your brilliance is to cultivate or nurture inner silence and inner stillness. We have to quiet the inner waters in order to be able to see that clear reflection of ourselves in our most brilliant state. And how do we do that? inner silence, inner stillness. So the best way to do is just to start on the outside, right? We start with the outer silence and outer stillness, which is obvious. And by the way, um, I'm going to put some links in the show notes to some longer podcasts. Since I'm committed to six minutes or less, there's only so much I can get out. But um, always check the show notes because I'll refer to other resources. So real quick, Outer silence, outer stillness, we know, right? Stop moving, stop talking, stop the noise. And then and only then can we begin to cultivate that inner silence, the inner solitude, the inner quiet, the inner stillness. And so a couple of ways to do that is just to be still with yourself and allow your mind to settle. Nature, no doubt, one of the best ways to cultivate and to communicate with and to experience that inner silence and inner stillness. Get out in the woods, get out to the beach, get out to your backyard and lay on the ground. Feel the earth beneath you. The earth has incredible healing qualities we forget about. Rhythm. Rhythm is another way. Rhythm in a walk. Rhythm in a run. Rhythm in a um, just even listening to rhythms oftentimes can help to settle us so that we can start to tap into inner silence, inner stillness. Meditation, of course, yoga, tai chi, qigong, anything that's going to help us to shift our nervous system and down-regulate from that heightened state of alertness to a more coherent, harmonious state of being. So the way that we learn to start trusting our brilliance is to turn inward and to start to become more quiet and still inside. And then the magic, oh boy, does that magic begin the fireworks start going, my friend, and you start to hear yourself 
you start to hear the inner guidance that's been there always. All right, that's enough for today. So I always end with a little ask, a little call to action, a little something to walk with me. Walk with me. Jump on Facebook Live Fridays, 830. Uh, you find me at Kara Bradley Teacher. Hey, why not check out Project Be Well? This is my monthly program. We're already registering for September. We ha It happens every month. And we really kind of go check all the boxes of the pillars of wellness and integrate the new science of the gut-brain connection. Big stuff. Great stuff. I hope you join me. Thanks for listening. Be well.